Stripers, stripers, stripers. It's about that time again. You guys see that seagull out there? That's exactly what I'm gonna be doing. He's waiting to see an easy target come up from the surf and he's running to it really fast to get it before it digs down. That's the technique I'm gonna be using because we're looking for soft shell sand crabs today. You know, this is one of my favorite times to look for soft shell sand crabs and that's because the tide is way out. This beach here is very shallow. It doesn't slope down too fast and you can see about 100 yards in front of you either way. You can see the soft shell sand crabs trying to dig down and trying to get buried, but sometimes they're just not strong enough to. It looks like I don't see that many right now, none at all. So I'm gonna bust out the net and try to get them the easy way. If you didn't know, there's a 35 count limit for sand crabs. I'm trying to get 35 soft shell sand crabs today right here so we can come back later at high tide. And a lot of you guys know the method already. Coming out here to where the surf is, and as this water recedes down, I'm kicking up the sand, kicking up any kind of sand crabs that come up. Here's one right off the bat, but it's not soft. And we're trying to get the soft shells, okay? So we're gonna throw that one back and only target the softies. The best time to get them is when the water goes out fast because the sand crabs, they don't have the strength to hold on to anything. All right, so now here's some water going out fast. Now you just gotta kick up the sand. Anything that's passing by is gonna get washed into the net. Let's see what we got. Dang, oh, we got a shrimp. Check that out. Look at that little shrimp. That's cool, we might just use that too. I'm gonna keep that in the net. As long as I got the net angled that way, it should not be able to come out. Look at that, I just dug them up. There we go, I found them. I found them, y'all. This is a nice one. That's what we're looking for. So instead of doing the, the weight method where we let the water come to us, we're just gonna dig them up like this. All right, there's another one. We got a couple more. All right, that's the technique we're gonna use right now. The dig them up method. That was a good 15 minutes of hard work trying to get these sand crabs. Let's see we, how many we got. One. Oh man, this is looking kind of dismal. There's one. I mean, you can tell just by looking at their backs which ones are soft and which ones are hard. All right, two. And I know we've got a shrimp in here somewhere. Where did that little shrimp go? Here's the shrimp. So that's our reward. Three tiny soft shells and one shrimp. We're gonna put them in our bucket. That's something. Man, that's a lot of hard work. Let me show you the order in which I think these baits go best. This is a soft shell with eggs. This is a soft shell with no eggs. This is a hard shell with eggs. You can see the eggs under its shovel right there. You peel back the shovel, you can see its eggs. And that's a lot of times what the perch and the stripers wanna eat. And lastly, we have the lowly totem pole sand crab with no eggs, no soft shell, and he's lucky because we don't want this one. There's our five soft shell sand crabs that we got. We are one seventh of our way to our limit, but every time we cast out, we're gonna use two, so we need to replenish that every time we cast. We gotta keep our supply high and stocked. Now, I used to like to put these sand crabs on back to back, but now I like to put them on like this, and that way, it kind of looks like they're spooning, all right? So when you put them on like they're spooning, it almost makes it look like there's one big soft shell sand crab on there. Now because these soft shell sand crabs are so hard to come by, they're so valuable, I'm using this bait button here, and this is designed to keep things on a barbless hook. Now this isn't a barbless hook, but I'm hoping that this just increases my chances of keeping those sand crabs on just a little bit. And that's all I need. Just a little bit increase in chances and you tip the odds to your favor. All right, bait button, two sand crabs. Let's see what happens here. And now I'm gonna find these fish. If I don't get them right here, I'm gonna move spots in the next couple minutes. Let's go, baby. Striper on. 
Let's go. It's a good one, too. That's what I thought, man. Let's go. Oh, yeah. It's a good one. Stripers. First one of the year. Feels decent, man. This is a keeper for sure. I'm going to guess this is 22 inches. On that soft shell. He's coming in, he's coming in quick, he's coming in quick. He's coming in quick. Let's go, let's go. Oh yep, he's right on top. I'll come I'll come down there for him. Yeah, that's a keeper. If I wanted to keep it, stripers are here. Soft shell sand crab all day. That's a nice one, man. Dude. Alright, there he is. Striped bass on two soft shell sand crabs, held on with the bait button. It's those soft shells, man. They catch fish like this. First one of the year, let's go. A nice one, first nice one of the year, but uh, Daniel and I, we're all gonna do catch and release today. I only cast out, this is my second cast, so I'm gonna let him go, we're gonna catch another one, maybe five more. I said we're gonna catch three today. First one, beautiful. Clean ass stripes too. Wrong way, buddy, wrong way. So I think there's two good ways to fish for stripers or perch. You can do it with a Carolina rig, fish finder rig, or you can do it with a high-low rig. The only problem if you have a high-low rig, you got the hooks here and they're maybe moving in like a six inch area and that's the strike zone. But when you're using this Carolina rig, the bait is basically, or the weight is basically staying in one place and then you got a three foot radius out to the bait. But as the current moves, you got the bait going on the other side, so you got another three foot radius. So you got six foot diameter around this weight. You cover way more area and the presentation looks way more natural. And there's just something about these soft shell, translucent sand crabs washing around in the water that gets these stripers to bite. Let's go. All right, we're gonna try to catch another one now. If you go in an area where it's not right here where we are, the curtain is just ripping, but there's kind of a hole here, but it's still pushing to the left. So what I'm doing here is casting to the right, not even that far. You can see where it's deep and dark, right in front of that second breaking wave, and that's where I got bit. So cast into the right, with the bait button on again, and it's gonna slowly drift to the left. Look, I cast it out, and this was out there for a good 15 minutes. And look at that, bait button is on, both sand crabs are still on, tight. I think that bait button is a good little trick you can use to keep these soft shells on longer. I'm about to cast out and I wanna show you a little tip that it took me a little while to learn, but I'm gonna to try to teach you now so you don't have to make the same mistake. So when you're using these soft shell sand crabs or even shrimp, maybe even squid sometimes, when you cast out, it's really easy for that bait to come right off. A lot of times, I'm sure you've experienced it, you get really frustrated. And a lot of times that happens because you wade out into the water like this. You got your weight down here, your bait is in the water. When you cast out, the surface tension of the water pulls the bait right off. So it's really important, just keep your weight and your bait out of the water. If it touches the water like that and you cast out, it's gonna come right off at the top of the water. So keep it up, cast it out, and no more lost bait. No more having to find more soft shells or rebait and get frustrated. Maximize your time in the strike zone. Look, if you're not into surf fishing, if you're not into surfing, you can go surf kayaking. Never in my life would I ever attempt that. But she's a beast. She is a beast for doing that. You try to catch a striper in front of her. Fish, fish bite, fish bite, little fish. Here we go again, got one. Little one though, probably a perch. Oh, he might've came off. No, he's still there, swimming towards me. Probably a perch, maybe a smelt. Maybe a small striper, not sure. Looks like a small. Small striper. Oh, 
Oh no. It's a smelt, y'all. So this is good and bad. A smelt, you know you're in the right place for smelt and stripers, but this is too big for striper bait and they could be bait sealers. Still a cool little fish, but I'm gonna let him go. We don't want no smelt. Let's let him go right here. I like watching him swim in the water. Get out of here. I'm gonna chase you down, man. I'm gonna chase you. I'm gonna chase you. Get out of here. Ha. Fish again. I think it's a smelt, though. Smelt. Little smelt. I can tell it's a smelt already. Man, kind of annoying because you work so hard to get that bait and then you just get it stolen by one of these trash fish, as they say. But I'm gonna let him go. And yeah, I'm gonna work on getting some more bait and I'll come back out here at high tide in a couple hours. Probably not gonna post anything. If you wanna see what I catch, you can check out my Instagram, Official Fisherman's Life, or you can check out my website, fishermanslife.net. Got these new hats, just got them in stock. Probably should have talked about that earlier, but whatever. So check them out. Stripers are here. Come out and get them, y'all.